Hey, how's everybody doing? Brother Phil here. Wanted to come on and share a word with you guys this morning. I actually started doing videos. They're pretty long, bro, on YouTube. So I'm going to try to shorten them. Just get to the point. Um, same thing with uh, Facebook. But I want to come on. Um, first of all, um, I've been an avid person who believe in the um, tax traps and the blood moons. There's a blood moon that happened. The last blood moon of the last treachery was happening between 2014 and 15. That last blood moon which happened on 9-28-2015 could possibly have been a seven-year warning. Um, possibly, possibly could be a seven-year warning. Uh, and um, I was talking about Luke, I'm sorry, Lot. Uh, hang on. Noah. Just, I'm all over the place because I just did like two videos on YouTube that lasted a long time and I was saying different things. So Noah, God told Noah to go into the ark and he told him to go into the ark for, you know, seven days early. He told him, he said, in seven days go on to the ark. Um, and then I was reading in Ezekiel, I think I lost the page, but it was talking about, uh, in Jeremiah, I think. It's talking about um, uh, maybe it wasn't. I think he's talking to the Israelites, and he's saying um, talking about the desert, going into the desert, and for forty uh, for forty years it'll be forty years for for, but it'll be a day for a year, and, and um, it could possibly be that God is giving us a seven-year warning um, for when he comes, um, we'll be ready. Now, in the course of that seven years, actually going back to 2008, he's given us many signs in the sun, moon, and the stars. He's given us many signs. Matter of fact, he just gave us a planetary alignment for the whole month of June, practically, and before that, he gave us a blood moon on the anniversary of Israel's birth. And um, these are things that we were able to look at, physically look at. And there's a chance that, the, well, the Bible says that these the moon and the stars are made for its, um, signs and signals. And then it says it's made for light. So... A lot of us got confused because we thought because a sign was there, then the thing would happen on that same day of the sign. But that's not necessarily true. So what's happening is that the sign is before the action or before it's warning us of something coming. So we understood Joseph and the prophecy that Joseph was given, um, and the, the narrate the dream uh, of the Pharaoh as that um, there would be seven years of plenty and then seven years of tribulation or seven years of famine. And we take that based off of that warning that maybe God has given us a seven-year warning from 2015 to 2022, uh, at the end of 22, as a warning, um, but the, the warning actually came in 2015 to 2022, and um, it's a warning for the tribulation period that can possibly be um, 2022 to 2029. Don't get me wrong, I don't know for sure, but looks like all the signs are here. Um, so, like I said before, a lot of people were talking about the Feast, you know, when we were saying, you know, me and a couple of guys believe the Feast of Trumpets, me and a couple of people, it's probably more than that. But No Man Knows the Hour, that's the name of it. And um, it's a play, it's a time period where no one knows. It's a 48-hour period where my, if you're on the East Coast right now, it's 12 o'clock, well, it's 1 o'clock where you at. 
and here it's 10:29, I believe, because my son set the clock yesterday in the car. So that means that your day and hour is different from my day and hour. Um, actually, your day is the same, but if you go overseas, their day and hour is different. So no man knows the day and hour. But the following the trend of the seven feasts of God, those are the time clocks, um, the Moedims for God. So Jesus was um, hung on the cross on Passover. Like call in it, call in it. Um, let me turn off this car. Maybe that'll help. But um, and it's probably still in my mic. Can y'all hear me? But sometimes when that happens, it steals my mic. And it's not even going off either. I don't know why. Maybe because I'm still on here. Anyway, from the last blood moon tetra, from the last blood moon in that tetra, which happens on nine twenty eight. 2022 could be could be could be a seven year warning which if you take a date counter i mean it's common sense but if you take a date counter and count seven years up you will come to feast of trumpets of this year so all the signs that we see i mean god said the end of the, the disciples asked him what would be the end of the age the age of grace they didn't ask him anything else. They didn't ask him what would be the end of tribulation. They did tell them through the rest of Matthew 24 what was going to be happening in the tribulation period. But from verses 1 through 7, Matthew 24, verses 1 through 7, he was saying what would the world be like before he comes and before things happen. Uh, it's relevance to when the tribulation period starts. I believe the tribulation period starts at verse 8 when it says these are the beginning of sorrows. Or he says these are the beginning of birth pains in other uh, translations. So, um, I don't know. Probably after uh, Biden visits, um, I think things are going to start to transpire very quickly, kind of gradually. And by the end of the summer, which is probably around September 11th, you're going to probably see a major war. You're going to see Israel defeat its immediate neighbors. And then you'll see, uh, you'll see Israel uh, be comfortable in their skin. And then Russia says, you know what? We're going to invade Israel because they are rich and they have this oil and they have this gas and they have all the and, they, and they're supplying our customers with oil and i don't think vladimir putin's going to take too much more of this and um i wouldn't even be surprised if you see some confrontation between russia and the other some other countries because it's a proxy war just like iran it has its proxies the united states and nato has their proxies and they're going to start fighting um each other and and look for things to continue to happen, like Roe versus Wade. Look, look for you know large uh, protests. Look for um, church vandalism and, and, and people um, shooting at the churches and, and killing people and burning down churches. Look for all of this kind of stuff. Look for, I mean, just and a lot of times it's a false flag. Sometimes it might really happen, but for the most part, ninety percent of the time it's a false flag. So, you know, we see the things that happen. We see the buildup. The um, nations are aligning themselves. They've been aligning themselves for a while, but they're really aligning themselves. We see the financial issues. We see the food crisis. We see all of these things looking like they were playing that way. Different factories burning down, supply chain problems, all kinds of stuff happening. Um that will set will pave the way for the Antichrist to be revealed in the not too distant future. So God bless you guys. I just wanted to do a quick video and get the word out. I know Facebook, uh, YouTube. I uh, go on to YouTube. Y'all watch this video on Facebook. Go on to YouTube and and uh, look for Prophecy Zone Radio, or Prophecy Zone 
news and subscribe to my channel there and like it and share it if you if you if you would like because um, it, it I'm gonna have some valuable information on there trying to get people ready uh, trying to get people to listen um, and to uh, be ready to go and want to go and and the Bible says that he's he's gonna give the crown of righteousness to all those who love his appearing. The crown of righteousness means you were righteous. In God's eyes, you were righteous. And that means that God has um, given you his position of righteousness, but that means that you were righteous because God made you righteous, but also you you decided to walk, uh, and, you know, obeying God and, and walk pure and clean to the best of God's ability in you. Not the best of your ability, the best of God's ability in you. You made that decision. And God is going to rescue the righteous. The Bible says he knows how to rescue the righteous out of temptation. And he's going to rescue the... Remember, he talked to Lot. And he asked... He's, uh, Abraham, sorry. And Abraham stepped in. And um, he was a intercessor for Sodom and Gomorrah and for Lot and his family. And he said that there were 50 righteous. He started off with 50 righteous, and he went all the way down to 10. He said, and God said, I would not destroy it if there were 10 righteous uh, there. So anyone who loves his appearing will get a clown of righteousness. So if you don't love his appearing, that means the opposite. You would not get his crown of righteousness, and you would not go with him when he comes. You have to want to go. It's just common sense. I mean, yeah, it, it, common sense can be fleshly, um, but a lot of times, common sense in the ma if you if you think about common sense in terms of it, just makes no it makes sense. Seek no other sense when it makes sense. You know, don't go for you know. A lot of people are confused, letting every wind of doctrine blow them over because they don't use just use your brain. Don't try to be special. Don't try to figure things out yourself. Ask God for the interpretation of Scripture. Ask God. Say, God, can you help me? But help me to use my common sense. That's why, um, if you look at Proverbs, especially if you go, I, I read the King James version. But if you go look at Proverbs and you read an easier version, it's going to tell. It sounds like it's talking about common sense. You know, a son listens to his mother, or a mother is proud of, you know, a son listens to his father, listen to instruction, you know, come and, you know, love instruction. You know, a mom's proud of her son because he's, he's he listens. I mean, this conversation is it's, it's simple. It's, it, the Bible said, talks about the simplicity of Christ. We make it hard. Just like the storm came when Jesus was walking on water in the storm or when Jesus was at the bottom of the boat in the, in the, on a pillow and the winds came and he uh, he says, oh, you of little faith. Um, the storms will make you scared, make you fearful, make you think differently. And God wants you to think a particular way when the storms are brewing, when the storms are at its max in life. And so what happens is when you're going through your life and you hear these doctrines, different doctrines, uh, you settle with it and you have no idea that we're in apostasy. The devil is, and he's a, he's 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 on it, man. He's on every part of the Bible, every itch. He swept the room up. He went into a room and swept the whole thing up. You know what I mean? He 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 goes into the room and sweeps the whole thing. He doesn't miss a spot. So in the Word of God, he he doesn't miss anything. So when people say you know stuff that I know is not right in the scriptures, you have to test the scriptures by what the you know you you it's like a dollar you know the FBI tests the real dollar bill. You have to know the real dollar bill if you're in the FBI before you can. You don't need to know the fakes. You just need to know the real dollar bill. You just need to know the real Bible so you can test what people are saying. You can test what I'm saying right now. Um, 
because there there are many false prophets and many messengers on Facebook. There's a lot of doctrines of demons that are floating around. It's going to trick people into believing things like there is no rapture or you can do what you want to do and be saved and born again or you, how you how you see Jesus is really important. If you see Jesus as bro, Lucifer's brother, then you're going to have issues. If you see Jesus as just one of the, you know, one of the brothers, one of the bros, you're going to have an issue. If you see that there is no father, but there is a son, and occasionally the Holy Spirit, you got a problem. If you say that there's just father only, you got a problem, which is re crazy, and Jesus is just a prophet. If you say it's just Jesus only, you got a problem. If you deny the father, you don't have the son. If you deny the son, you don't have the father. If you Holy Spirit, ended. if you deny the Holy Spirit, that's blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Anyway, I got to get out of here. I don't know if somebody's trying to call me. I know the batteries are low on this phone, so it keeps talking about call ended. I know the the car was, I got the key out of the ignition, so I don't know what it's doing. But anyway, we are in the very, very, very last days. Like I said before, that last blood moon, take a date counter and count up seven years. You might fall somewhere around Feast of Trumpets. It doesn't have to fall exactly. I'm not going to even, you know, and like I said before, the generation doesn't have to fall exactly. My mom's 84 years old, 83 years old. She's so, actually, my mom's probably older than that. She's 31 years older than me. She had me at 31, so she's, um, so she's, um, I don't know, my brain's dead. She's 84. So my mom is past the 80-year generation. So big deal. If it if it goes a year after after the generation, but Jesus said this generation should not pass until all these things be fulfilled. And generation could have took off from 19, 1952 as the first meet of year and counted 80 years up after that. So you you just don't really know. But we will know when we get to heaven. We're going to know all things. But anyway, God bless you. I promise you I'll keep coming on here, try to do these shorter to the point videos in the near future. God bless you guys and have a wonderful day. And if the rapture happens by then, see y'all there. Bye.